Why limit yourself to two parents? If you have three, you can borrow more money. Anthony here for DNews, and as complex and wonderful as the human genome is, your options for getting DNA are limited. The best you can be are the good parts of your mother and father, and even that happens rarely. You're bound to get some of their junk bits thrown in there too, right? Like, I've got my mother's bad eyesight, and my dad's weird kneecaps, for example. They're Crazy weird, you guys. But new legislation in the UK could be changing that. 99.8% of our DNA is inside our cells and it's inherited evenly from our moms and dads. But we've got a bit that comes from our mitochondria, the parts of our cells that are the power supplies. And that 0.2% passes directly from your mother to you. Now defects in mitochondria can be very serious. This is more than weird kneecaps. We're talking about things like heart disease and muscular dystrophy. And because it comes straight from your mom to you, there's no chance of dad's DNA coming in and replacing it. About one in 6,500 babies is born with some sort of mitochondrial defect. So what do we do for those people? Add a third parent to the mix. Use a specialized type of in vitro fertilization where the genetic material from the mother's egg is placed into a donor egg that's had its own genetic material removed. And then it's fertilized with the father's sperm and the baby still gets its physical traits completely from its mom and dad. But that 0.2%, that troublemaking mitochondrial DNA is from the parent who provided the donor egg. Two moms, no weaknesses. This sounds great, do we have this? Why are we not doing this? Oh, because it's extremely controversial. It's considered germline gene therapy. It doesn't just last a generation. Once we give that third parent's DNA to that baby, all of the generations of that family have it forever. Which is great if we eliminate muscular dystrophy in that family, but pretty bad if we also unknowingly give that family liver disease in the process, or even some other defect we don't know about yet. There have also been moral and ethical concerns expressed. People are worried that this is the first step to eugenics or designer babies. People who are against the technique are saying that normal in vitro fertilization will already get rid of the mother's mitochondrial defects since it uses a donor egg for the whole process. Of course, that also means the mother isn't biologically related to the child. Only the father and the egg donor are. Well, the UK government wants to end the debate. They've decided that the health risks of mitochondrial disease outweigh the concerns, and they want to put this thing in motion. They are drafting up regulations, which will go in front of parliament later this year and hopefully make it legal. What do you guys think? Medical advancement or nightmare genetic slippery slope? I love the idea. It doesn't feel like designer genes to me. It feels like a practical solution to a lot of problems. Knock those diseases out at the source, man. Let me know how you feel down below and subscribe for more D News.